The Nifty holding at that 18,150 mark. Things were quiet, right, on the markets. A bit of a wait and watch approach. Markets actually slipped from the top of the trading session. Almost sort of stuck to that all, uh, near one is to one advances to declines ratio. Uh, so that's broader markets for you. Finely balanced, evenly balanced. Evenly balanced indeed. In fact, uh, we just bided our time ahead of the big important outcome of the FOMC. Hello and welcome. You're watching us here on Markets Today. I'm Mangla Malu. This is a show where we track all uh, the six hours of day's trading action in five headlines. Let's talk about those headlines indeed. Stock markets across the world were actually trading with caution ahead of the US Fed decision tonight. The Lal Street snapped its four-day gaining streak. Sensex fell about 200 points. Nifty managed to hold on to that 18,000 mark. In fact, much above that 18,050 mark as well. There's optimism around Sun Pharma's growth outlook for specialty drugs and genetics. Even Tech Mahindra finds favor with an in-line performance and attractive valuations. Chola Mandalam Investment climbs on strong business momentum while record high margins drive up Karnataka Bank and sharply lower margins hurt LIC Housing Finance. Max Healthcare, on the other hand, sees a good second quarter with higher occupancies and strong hospital revenue growth. Nika falls despite a decent second quarter. India is primed for high growth over 10 years and it can become the office and the factory of the world, says Morgan Stanley's Rhythm. They say expects financials, consumer discretionary services and IT services as well as industrials to drive growth in this decade. That's a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. Let's tell you what we have lined up for you on the show today. It's a packed show in market opinion. We have Mihir Vora, who's the director, CIO of Max Life Insurance and Big Corporate Voices. We have Dilip Sangvi, MD of Sun Pharma, Y Vishwanathan Gauda, MD and CEO of LIC Housing Finance, a stock that was lower in today's trading session. Let's talk about the stock markets then. Across the world, they were trading with caution ahead of the US Fed decision later tonight. The Lal Street snapped its four day gaining streak. Uh, Sensex fell by over 200 points. The Nifty did manage to hold on to that 18,000 mark. Despite falling by almost 60 odd points, the Nifty Bank as well as the mid caps also saw some bit of profit taking, understandably ahead of the big Fed outcome. Let's see where we go from here because then we will watch out for the weekly options expiry tomorrow as well. How did the market fare today? We have Prashant with more details. Prashant. Well, the market did come off a little bit. It was wait and watch from the morning and uh, bulk of the session was spent that way. But a little bit of slip happening towards close. It's a big event that we're going into, which is the Fed decision. And the market responded appropriately. Broader markets did better. They corrected less, fell less than what the Nifty did uh, today. Uh, pretty similar in terms of sectoral composition, like yesterday. Metals and pharma gaining for the second day in a row. PSU banks pulling back. They've had a good run last fortnight. Consumers and real estate is uh, two areas which saw some profit booking as well. Bharati, Apollo Hospitals, Maruti, these are stocks which... Uh, uh, sort of suffered some cuts, gains coming through in, uh, you know, Hindalco, Sun Pharma, and perhaps uh, ITC uh, as well. Broader markets, advances to decline ratio was about 1 is to 1, so very finely, evenly balanced. Gains coming through in lots of defense names. Once again, Musgaon Dock, there was uh, Kochi Shipyard, Garden Reach Shipbuilders. Karnataka Bank started strong, ending pretty much at circuit. Sharda Kropkem, Gujarat Florochem, uh, some of the others. Broader losses uh, coming through in LIC housing, which slipped quite a bit on the re in reaction to numbers. Chumble reacting to numbers on the downside and Kajaria uh, selling off a little bit as well. As I said, the big decision is the Fed. A hike is priced in. The big question, there are two questions. One, will the Fed indicate a downshift in the future pace of rate hikes, which is what they will do in December? Will they leave the room open for 50? And if they do, how much of that is in the price is the big question. The S&P 500 is already up about 10% in the last 12 or 13 sessions. We'll react to all of this tomorrow morning. And of course, there is also the RBI MPC, which will be closely watched. Big events. And of course, the market coming back tomorrow. Back to you. All right, we take that point, Prashant. Thanks a lot for that. Let's also get you some expert opinion now. Mihir Vora, Director and Chief Investment Officer at Max Life Insurance, continues to be bullish on the Indian uh, domestic economy. Giving his take on the realty space, he did say that there's traction in the real estate space and it has good underlying demand. So perhaps a good bet for investment as well. Listen in. I think we continue with the domestic theme. Uh, we have been bullish on the domestic uh, uh, economy for quite some time. Uh, more urban than rural, I think consumption is stronger on the urban pockets. Rural pockets are still to catch up. So a bit of a K-shape recovery, but we have seen that the markets do represent a fair chunk of the, you know, the large corporates and the organized sector. So to that extent, uh, maybe the rural weakness is still not reflected in the market, except in some pockets of FMCG, et cetera. So stick with the, uh, you know, the domestic theme that includes financials, industrials, cap goods, 
uh, EPC and of course the discretionary segments like uh, not only the services like hotels etc but even automobiles uh, uh, and and thereabouts uh, real estate is one one segment where we are seeing some traction uh, and if hopefully we are nearer to the end of the tightening cycle by the Federal Reserve and the RBI and if interest rates uh, don't move much sharply from these levels then even real estate uh, seems to have a good underlying base demand uh, that should drive the domestic economy. All right, and ahead of the U.S. Federal Reserve's rate hike decision later tonight, that will have a bigger, uh, you know, impact on our markets as against the strength of the domestic economy, which has kept us afloat. We got uh, some comments coming in from Ken Peng, who's the Asia Pacific Investment Strategist at City Private Bank. He said that he didn't see a reason for the Fed to shift its stance. However, he also believes that there'll be no space for the Fed to give a dovish signal. And were that to happen, perhaps, perhaps we might see some sell-off. I think there's really no real reason for the Fed to turn soft today because, you know, employment is still rising, some 200 to 300,000 a month. Uh, inflation is tapering off a little bit, but we're still at 8%. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the inflation bit is still going to be the, the higher priority among the Fed's two uh, mandates. So um, I think, you know, if, if the Fed's talk, right, the, the press conference, the statement is very similar to September's, then that will be considered uh, as hawkish because the 75 basis point is already in the, in the price. So, um, you know, we're basically comparing the Fed uh, statements now tonight versus, uh, versus September. The market function is still continuing. It's just becoming tighter. Um, so so I, think, I think the Fed, that's basically what the Fed is trying to achieve, right, tighter financial conditions. Um, so. We'll have to see whether, uh, you know, in his press conference, um, uh, you know, Powell will talk about how, uh, you know, what, what, what is a, um, you know, excessive amount of market instability. Um, so that will be something that, uh, that the market is very concerned about. In terms of jobs and inflation, I don't think there's going to be really that much space for the Fed to give us a dovish uh, signal. Um, so, so if we don't get anything, uh, on the on the dovish side, I think you'll we'll, probably see some of the recent uh, uh, rally, uh, um, uh, you know, coming coming off. All right, we take that point, uh, Ken. With that, we uh, move on to the second headline of the day. At Sun Pharma was the one which ended about a percent and a half higher in today's trading session, which was an outperformance given the weakness that we saw in the overall equity sentiment. And this, after an inline set in the second quarter, brokerages have also weighed in on what to make of uh, the company's earnings. Ekta Batra joins in with the highlights out there. Ekta. Thanks for that. Well, yes, the momentum for Sun Pharma continues. In fact, it is at a fresh 52-week high, reacting to the commentary from the management, considering that the conference call took place after market hours yesterday. Remember, numbers came out during market hours, so the company did see, or the stock did see, that sort of momentum uh, post the Q2 numbers being released during markets yesterday. Uh, now, in terms of a couple of key takeaways, the global specialty sales were up 27% year on year. It was really the key driver in terms of numbers. Numbers. They did $200 million in terms of total sales. In fact, the company has said that they are exploring in licensing opportunities, m and when it comes to their speciality uh, pipeline. Moving to the other segment in the U.S., which is basically the generic segment, they did say that price erosion in the U.S., does remain so that does remain a concern for most companies which have a portfolio in the u.s they are on track to launch the generic version of revlimid generic which is basically the cancer drug in the u.s market but yes they are not in the second wave of launchers as it was expected the halol plant has an official action indicated status from the u.s fda currently and that continues the company is uh, implementing remediation when it comes there R&D expenditure is expected to scale up for Sun Pharma going forward. But as of now, overall, despite the speciality sales doing so well, the company is sticking to its guidance, which it had given earlier, which is higher single-digit, lower double-digit growth, which is intact for FY23. Brokerages, extremely positive, most of them. So, for example, the likes of Bernstein, Morgan Stanley, Nomura, City, all of them have maintained their ratings. Many of them have increased their target prices on the stock. One of the outliers is Goldman Sachs, which has a sell and a target price of 830. On the positive side, brokerages have said it is well diverse 
diversified in terms of a business which is helping Sun to manage its business volatility. They are positive in terms of the US markets as well as the margins driving growth. Goldman Sachs is a bit uh, skittish on Sun Pharma simply because of uh, factors such as intensifying industry-wide US price erosion. Consolidated sales for the quarter were at rupees 108,092 million, up 13.1 percent year on year. Most of our businesses witnessed good growth, led by global specialty business, India, and emerging markets. For Q2, our global specialty revenues were up. 27.5 percent year on year to about US dollar 201 million. Illumia, Sequa, and Winlevy were the growth drivers for the quarter. That's about Sun Pharma. Let's talk about Tech Mahindra now. That also came out with an inline set of second quarter numbers. We spoke with the company's MD and CEO, CP Gurnani, as well as the CFO, Rohit Anand, who said that the firm would actually continue to work towards a margin benchmark of almost 14% by the fourth quarter of this financial year. They added that Tech Mahindra also increased its profitability despite increase in salaries. Take a look, because the street liked those numbers and uh, valuation supported it as well. I think it is just a way overall Tech Mahindra's product mixes and the geography mixes. From a geography mix, you know that we do about 49% from US, whereas most of the peers are at about 70%. Uh, the second part is, uh, from a product mix point of view, uh, there are certain sectors uh, which are right now relatively slower. So I would not see read too much in this particular 2.9 percent versus 3 point some other percentage because you have to look at the overall operations have been run very, very beautifully. And uh, when I look at considering that we did a salary increase, we are able to increase in profitability, we are able to uh, become better by in DSO days, our free cash flow is one of the best in the recent quarters. Uh, overall, my customer wins. My large deal wins continue to be 700 million plus. I think it has been a good quarter. All right, so that was the management of uh, Tech Mahindra. The third headline today, financials, were, they were in focus today after Jola Investment gained close to 5% on strong business momentum. But record high margins kept Karnataka Bank, uh, uh, you know, rally a whopping 20%. It locked at upper circuit. And then we had LIC Housing Finance, which is down almost... 8.5% on account of weakness in the margins. Abhishek Kothari joins in with the details of all of these uh, numbers. Abhishek, actually, let's start with LIC, which fell in today's trading session. Uh, well, the big missing point in LIC's result was the net interest margin coming in at 1.8 percent versus an estimate by uh, Kotak Securities of about two and a half percent. So the net interest income in itself has declined by almost 28 percent on a sequential basis. Uh, just to put the number in perspective, net interest margin was at 1.8 percent when compared to 2.54 percent in the previous quarter and about two percent in the same quarter last year. Uh, interest income has declined by 3.8 percent sequentially. This is despite the fact that disbursals grew by 10.5% on a sequential basis and there was an AM growth of about 2.6% on a sequential basis. So the PNL, both in terms of NI and PAT, has been below our poll. Uh, PAT has come in at about 305 crore. We were working with a number of more than 830 crores. Morgan Stanley has written on LIC Housing Finance wherein they have an underweight rating and a target price of 375 per share. They say that, you know, the PAT is 70% below their own estimate driven by the fact that NIM miss was about 34% from their own number. So provisions were 72% higher than Morgan Stanley's uh, estimate and uh, loan growth was in line with their estimate given the fact that you know home loans grew by 15% on a YY basis. Back to you. As far as the NIMS are concerned, we are very confident that in the quarters to come, there will be definitely there will be an improvement beyond what we are now we have planned also and we are very sure that uh, the credit cost will be around 45 to 50 basis points analyzed. That's what we are looking at. Then going forward, both in the developer book and also as well as the individual loan book, 
we will have very good improvement in our NPS. Loan book growth is concerned now. The, we are very optimistic that the growth is around 15 percent. Then in the coming two quarters also the, the demand is robust, and we are very sure and confident that we will be showing a growth of minimum 15 percent for the whole year. All right, Abhishek, uh, stay with us. You're still with uh, us on, uh, uh, you know, you talk, uh, spoke about LIC housing finance. Let's talk about Karnataka Bank because that one, a big, massive rally, 20% rally there. Well, for Karnataka Bank, the period momentum was uh, actually very strong and the stress in the balance sheet has also reduced. So to begin with, the interest income is up 8.7% sequentially. This is despite the fact that loan growth has been just 2.6% quarter on quarter. So the yields have surprised positively. The net interest income is up 16.75% quarter on quarter, given the fact that you know deposit momentum was just around 1, 1.5%. So not much of an impact in terms of interest expenses over there. The net interest market Margin is at five year high or about 20 quarter high of about 3.56 percent. The PAT was at 412 crore, which compares to about 126 crore in the same quarter last year and about 114 crore in the previous quarter. So the ROA or return on asset have jumped to 1.7 percent. This compares to about 0.57 percent in the same quarter last year and around 0.5 percent in the previous quarter. The stress in the balance sheet has reduced. Gross NP ratio is down by 65 70 basis basis point on a sequential basis coming in at 3.36 percent and the restructured portfolio that's also seen a decline in its share by almost 115 to 120 basis point uh, now at about 6.22 percent when compared to 7.37 percent in the previous quarter so the street has given a thumbs up to this results back to you thumbs up indeed uh, we had uh, arul Selvan, the president and cfo of chola mandalam investment finance uh, he said that he expects uh, to see about 20 to 22 percent sort of growth in assets under management and expects the cost of funds to rise by a little over 50 basis points. Let's hear him out as well. We will look at around 20 to 22 percent AM growth as we move forward in the, for the full year. Uh, and if, uh, if things pan out better, it can even be better than that. Uh, uh, with regard to the NIMS, uh, I have spoken earlier also. For the full year, we expect the cost of funds to increase by around 50 to 60 basis points uh, going by the trend. Uh, and at, as of YTD level, the cost of funds is still lower than compared to last year. But uh, yes, uh, as a quarter on quarter, uh, that is Q1 versus Q2, there has been a drop <clears throat> because of the cost of funds increase. This is expected and this is what we have guided as you rightly pointed out. Way forward is looking at the coming festival seasons and a reasonably good harvest, uh, you know, for a predominant part of the country, especially in the context that we are spread all over the country almost equally. Uh, so we, while there could always be some regions or geographies where there can be impact, we will see some amount of reasonable growth in the rest of the locations. With that, we'll uh, slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll come back with all the other headlines that we track today.